Hi, this is Vaughan in Nova Scotia. Um, I'm actually in my outdoor setting for doing some throwing this afternoon. Um, it's beautiful. It's about uh, 70 degrees. Um, it's a bit chilly for a t-shirt, um, but it is really pretty. I could actually show you that. Um, it's nice to look at the water anytime. So um, there you go. I think you can get a view there. But um, so basically, um, that's the point. That's Fort Point. It's called um, Getson's Cove. And there's a backhoe actually on the point there, real building a rock wall uh, to actually uh, protect that house against the nor'easters coming up later this year because uh, the water came over the front lawn last year. So, uh, anyway, they're hopefully in good luck to them. So, uh, all right, let's get this set up so you can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna just throw some narrow forms today. Um, it's something f like just normal small pieces, but how to narrow them. Because it's quite hard uh, when you're learning how to throw, everything wants to basically get wider. Um, that's the dilemma. Because uh, the force of the wheel through spinning makes the pieces get wider so this is a little demo on how to make something stay narrow and get taller instead of getting wider all right I've just got tiny pieces of clay so in other words like a small bud vase or a little drinking glass would be fine too this is B mix 5 which is from Laguna cake like clay company it's a white clay except for the little bit of brown that's got onto it um, that's the problem of multi clay studios, but um, but it won't hurt. Um, and and this is a Shimpo light that I'm throwing on, so it should easily be quiet enough. Uh, I have a Shimpo whisper, which is silent, but uh, just a little hum. Maybe you can hear it. All right, all right. So dribble the water, wet your hands, centering. We've done videos on centering. Oh, my mask strap is hanging down. Yeah, there you go to tell this video was done during COVID. There you go. So centering, left hand in tight on the wheel head, top hand pushing down, and then let go slowly. If you're out of problems, having problems centering, you could always cone it up, push it back down, but keep your left hand spinning on the wheel. It almost burns because of that, depending on what kind of bat you're using. But anyway, there you go, centered. This is a plastic bat that I'm throwing on. Had it for decades. Okay, hole in the center. And then pull out, as long as you've got some moisture in between your fingers. Now it's drying, so you let go slowly. Dribble right on the rim so it goes on the outside as well. So there you go, push out a bit further. I always like to put my middle finger right over to the center a couple of times just to compress that center area so you don't get little cracks later on. All right, slowing the wheel down a touch. Now, all the pressure should be with the outside fingers pushing in and just resist with the inside fingers. Just a little resistance, just enough so you can keep it going in but put some pressure on so the clay gets squeezed between your fingers and it pushes north of it, up on top of the pot. Same again, push in with your outside fingers, resist with your inside fingers, but not enough so the piece gets wider. If you press hard with the inside fingers, it will get wider. But see, it keeps getting narrower. Now, how do I get my hand in there? Well. You have to be brave. Push down, it widens it a bit. So obviously it's so narrow I can get my hand in without denting it a lot, but because it's spinning the dent is equally distributed around the piece, so it really doesn't dent just in one place. All right, so now, I'm gonna dribble some water right on the rim edge so it dribbles inside and outside. 
I'm not going to put my hand all the way in, but I am going to push down in a little bit more at the bottom to narrow it even more. And then come up. Now I'm keeping the pull all the way to the top to feel to see if the wall is equally thick all the way up, which it is. And then let go slowly at the top. All right, so this rib is old, but I've shaped it over the years and it's perfect for what I like to do with it now. So basically, I'm just going to push in at the bottom with my finger over the top to make a little undercut. And then my finger's going right there and pushing that up a little bit. And it will make that little foot so I don't have to trim one on later on. It's actually shaped already. And it's a bit wider than the pot itself. So the pot gets a bit more stability. And then this is one of those metal ribs that has a corner to it just there rather than a complete round. Just going to dribble some water down so my hand doesn't. And now I can narrow even more with this. Put some pressure on and narrow even more. And then bring it to the top. And let go when you get close to the edge at the top. I don't go over the edge, I just kind of compress that a little bit with my finger. A lot of traffic with that wall being built on the point there, they're taking tons of rock. My guess is that each truckload is carrying at least 20-30 tons of rock. Alright, get that cleaned up. And then you're going to need to get the water out that's in the, in the inside of the pot. Keep it spinning so the piece doesn't get dented. Right to the bottom, push it up and down a couple of times and then gently lift it slowly so that it pulls the water up with it. Because it's narrow, the sponge is being squeezed. There's a little bit left in there, not too much though. I'll go back one more time. There you go. This is that tool Freddy made for me. I, made, I have a wooden one that I made years ago. And, um, but Freddie is in Florida and he made this one for me. It can be used reversed either way, but it simply replaces the leather a little bit and smooths the rim. Now, I don't, don't need to do that. This clay body is so smooth that you really don't need to use that tool. I just wanted to show you. Maybe Freddie will make you one. All right. There you go, that's a narrow, small drinking glass that'll fit nicely in the hand. I'll take some water around it. I tilted my wheel forward so the water dribbles to the front of the wheel. So in other words, I put a little shim underneath the back of the wheel here. I have a little shelf unit to the right of me here that I just built for my outside studio. There you go. All right. Now I'll do the bit, the pot that's a little more difficult than that one. That was just narrowing and having it flare out a little bit. Let's go with a bud vase, so you want a really narrow top. <coughs> if you're a beginner, you should try and round that off as much as possible, so it's easier to center. So press hard with the top hand and the side hand. It's really hard. You're putting on 20, 30 pounds of pressure with your hands when you do that. Squash down, just to feel for the clay to s for centering, and then push up with your left hand so the ball gets a bit taller, and then go for the center, and let go slowly. Okay, putting a hole in. Don't go too deep, leave about a half. 
half a centimeter to a centimeter at the bottom. Okay, we'll water in. I'm not opening up the bottom too much because I'm going to make this one a rounded form with a narrow top. So push up, go right to the top. Don't stop until you get to the top and make sure it stays lubricated. If it did dry out, you would have to let go slowly. Push in, start a pull and come up. Don't thin it too much at the top because we're going to be narrowing this. The wheel's going about uh, two thirds of its normal speed, top speed. Now I'm going to slow it down to about half. Hand has to go inside, remember, so I'm going to widen it now from the bottom until I get to the top. Well, no, to about two thirds of the way up. Now I'm going to push back with my outside fingers and watch what I do with this hand. And you've got to judge this carefully, you don't want it to buckle. So you got to try and keep your fingers equally distributed with equal pressure. There you go. So it narrowed a little bit. Push that in a little bit down there. And then this finger's inside and the outside finger just grabs some water from on lower down and comes up and pushes in and this finger is pressing down. Yeah, that wants to keep bellying out down there because I'm putting all the pressure on the top here. Dribble some water on it. Now before I close it up, I'm going to get the water out from the bottom inside. Take a look, nothing left in there. So this finger should be wet because it's going back underneath there. Now I'm going to grab some thickness there and push in and the top left finger is pressing down I'm gonna flatten that with the rib that little piece kept wanting to buckle out so Dribble some water on there, make sure it's wet on the inside because I've got to put my finger around on the underside without dribbling water down into the bottom. So then I'm going to do the same again, grab some thickness there, come up. So this finger and this finger pressing down, this finger's pushing back, but it isn't pushing enough so it gets wider, it just resists. You've got to judge how wide you want to go in there. Oh, I lifted it off the pin. There you go. And so basically, getting rid of that little extra water off the outside there. Yeah, these plastic bats can lift right off if you just catch them. So they're not very heavy, they're so light. Okay, so I've got that cleaned up. Now, this area at the top, wet that finger again. And just wet that. So I grabbed some weight from the clay there and pushed it up into that area there. Using whichever finger you feel comfortable using. Now I'm just going to throw this little cylinder that I have on the top there. Let's wet it again. I usually take my splash pan off on the back there so I got more room at the back of the wheel because that's what I put my hand down there and caught it and now I'm going to flare it out again now you could keep making this really narrow it's up to you how wide you want to get you know how wide this should be or how narrow because all you do is you basically wet it and then push that in a bit more and you're just going to get one stem of a flower in there basically at this point I guess
guess that's why they call it a bud vase. There you go. I should take my mask off, it wants to blow and catch the pot. We're all kind of volunteering to wear masks at this point because we don't have any COVID-19 in Nova Scotia. We, we beat it temporarily, probably. And, um, but we all want to keep it away. So we're wearing masks if we interact with people. There you go. Now I did the, that tool just to shape the bottom. The other end of my tool just pushes in and gives me that foot. So I don't have to trim a foot on there. It's already there. Yeah, the Atlantic provinces of Canada, um, which is Newfoundland, New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, and Prince Edward Island, um, are actually forming a bubble. So if you're looking for a uh, a vacation here I'm not sure you'll be able to come this year um, but hopefully next year this will be over sometime next year anyway and you can come visit Nova Scotia which is absolutely beautiful watch what this tool does now put my finger underneath and I just created a shoulder So that's a little, could do it again if you want. Let me just show you what I did. Just that corner I pushed into there to create that extra little ridge. So now I can put an element of decoration just in that little shoulder area, just there, carving or a little painting, whatever. There you go, that's a bud vase. Pull it off. still see it right okay let's slide it to here make sure you spread your fingers out at that point all right <coughs> all right so next I'm going to show you how a little bit less than that actually this one would be for those lotion pump dispenser type things. I'm going to tie this into a knot so it doesn't dangle down. That's better. Okay, center in. Oh, the bat's come off again. These bats are a little hard because you don't see the pin when you put them on as well. <coughs> okay. Okay, so center it as much as you can by the left hand on the wheel head, this hand on the top. Put your finger down, about a half a centimeter to a centimeter from the bottom, you pull out. Not too far, because this one's a narrow base too. This will be a, a, a lotion dispenser or a soap dispenser. Now, remember, all the pressure on the outside fingers going to the top. Now it's starting to drag a bit on your fingers, so let go slowly. Same again. All the pressure with the outside fingers. You pull up. The inside fingers just give you a little resistance. Now, uh, you can't see from the camera angle. This little finger is dragging on the clay behind the wheel, behind the pot, so that I'm adding a little bit of pressure with this finger too. And squeezes it wider a bit again. Push down uh, with your outside fingers. You're pushing down and up. Keep it rising. Follow the pull all the way to the top. Relaxing the pressure as you go up top. 
Now I'm going to use my thumb on my left hand to push that narrower a bit as I get up there. It gives you a, the more fingers you can have in control, the better. Okay, so you let go slowly. Now I'm going to widen it a bit as I do the push this time from the inside, just to widen. Now I'm letting go because I don't want it wide up the top, we're going to narrow it again. But first you've got to get the water out. Take a look, make sure you've got nothing left in there. Now, this is collaring, but you've got to be gentle. And you want to keep check on the bottom part of the pot, because when you put pressure on down and up like that, it can bulge out down here. See, just a touch there. I can do that just a bit more. I don't do this much because it does bulge out the bottom a little. I mostly do that the way I did the other one. Now I'm going to drag the water off the bottom because it's softening down there. All the water does is soften clay, so you keep it off as much as possible. I've sucked it out of the inside already, so that'll stop it getting any softer. This is that metal tool. Okay, so now I'm going to push in with those fingers again. Two fingers are pressing in and one pressing out at the top just to kind of keep it narrowing. Remember the inside finger, if it presses hard, will actually make it wider. So you've got to be very gentle. So you go, this is where I start that. I pushed out a little bit too. And now I'm pushing in with my two fingers. Keep watching the bottom of the pot so you don't miss any pack if it starts bulging out because you're putting a, quite a bit of pressure down. This sponge has got some water on it, so... Now this one isn't going to be closed up. This wants to be narrowed. Now I'm going to have to push it in because that weight is actually making it bulge a bit. So just narrow it again. The metal tool doesn't give much resistance to the clay, so it's a nice way of compressing without dragging on the clay. Now this part is where it's a bit more. So grab your clay, come up. Okay, I can just get my finger in there now. I'm going to compress a little bit on that little bulge still wants to push out. That depends on how thin you make that little area when you do the pull up, but it's, it's easy to control that. I want to get this hole so my finger just fits. The lotion pump dispenser pumps that you buy um, have a collar on the top, which I think is about half an inch across. So I don't want to get any narrower than that. There you go, so basically let go as slow as you can. And now I'm going to clean up the edge a little bit there. So the pump will fit right on top there. Now that's about probably over half an inch, so there's plenty of room for that dispenser to go in there. And then you just finish up by getting your water off. Now you can do those corners if you want to, just to, it gives you the glaze something to sink into. So I'm digging the corner of that metal tool in there. And you can leave this totally rounded or you could make some marks in there as it's spinning. Here's that little tool that I use. This was from England. In, let me see, what did I, I brought it over in 1985. I grew up in Yorkshire in England. I went to Peniston Grammar School and, um, and then uh, went to art school in England. And then I taught high school for five years until 1980 to 85 at Highfield Secondary School 
and church fields in Sittingbourne. There you go, just drag that out a little bit. So the foot is formed, I don't have to trim. So that's another narrow form. I think we've got most of that covered, because that's a lot to learn. So here's the just finalized, I'll just give you a couple of pointers. Uh, let's see if I can lift this up a bit, so you're not talking to my belly. All right, it's breezy today. Uh, what could go wrong? Well, if you make the pot really thin in the lower part, you will actually make it buckle and it will collapse because you're putting a lot of pressure on the actual top as you're closing it up. So when you're doing those pulls, make sure you leave it reasonably thick at the bottom uh, and you don't over thin it anywhere. Um, that's the main thing that can go wrong. Um, and if you leave it too thin at the top, you get folding happening as, you fold, as you're putting it in, the, it'll ripple. So that's also a thing. So it's really about just keeping your clay with a reasonable thickness so that you can actually still push it with a lot of pressure without it buckling. You know what? But um, so uh, I guess that's well, oh, 26 minutes. We're way up there. So uh, I like to keep them short. Um, I hope you're enjoying your summer wherever you are and staying really healthy. I don't want to see anybody catching COVID-19. So um, uh, just uh, enjoy your summers and um, plan some things to do in the fall. Or learn to play guitar, do indoor gardening. I mean, something to get us through the next winter. All right. Well, I'm Vaughan Smith. This is Westcote Bell Pottery. Uh, I have a this YouTube channel, but I also have a Facebook page under my name, Westcote Bell Pottery Vaughan Smith. Um, and uh, you know you can contact me if you have any questions technical stuff I don't mind answering so uh, so enjoy potting all right take care bye